team, there's a three litter agency that would tell you right now that you should not go out and purchase your own gas mask. Now, I don't know about you, but over the course of the last few years, I don't know how much I can trust this particular agency. Let me know down in the comments below if you know which one I'm talking about. But there are four key things that I need you to bear in mind before you go ahead and go purchase one. Uh, here we're going to be looking at a couple, uh, one made by Parcel and one made by Myra. And so these are both a couple really good options and I got a couple different uh, filters here that we're going to look at. But I think there's something to it, right? So I was talking to some buddies uh, this past weekend about the need for gas masks. And, you know, I think that there's a lot of fear out there uh, and a lot of general concern over the fact of why we may or may not need one. And for the, for the practical aspect of it, right, I'm talking about the, the daily, the, the most likely situations or scenarios. Maybe you do live up in the mountains. Maybe you live out in the woods. And you're concerned about, you know, a fire hazard. And so you think that, you know, having a gas mask is something that may be of benefit to you. Well, you know, that might be true. Uh, however, comma, pause for dramatic effect. Maybe you should have gotten down off the hill when the sheriff came and knocked on your door and told you that the fire's coming, right? Maybe you should have been paying attention to your local radio in your search and rescue organizations. And when they say, get out of Dodge, man, it's time to get out of Dodge. Get off that hill. You don't need to hang around until the last minute. Does that make sense? So this agency goes on to say that a, a mask would only protect you if you're wearing it at the exact moment of a bioterrorist attack occurred. Unfortunately, the release of a biological agent is most likely to be done covertly. That is, without anyone knowing. And that means that you would not have enough time in advance to put your mask on. And that is not an untrue statement. And so the first key takeaway that I want you to bear in mind before you go out and purchase a pro mask or a gas mask is that surplus does not equal quality, right? Just because you can head down and buy a World War II gas mask does not mean that what you're picking up is going to be beneficial to you. It may not be protective at all. In fact, a lot of those gas masks that are out there, so there's a ton of Israeli ones and a lot of other ones that are out on the market. And the thing with these is that they have been used, right? They've been used in training predominantly, and they could have been used in an actual NBC or sea burn environment, which means that they've already been subject to the things that you're trying to protect yourself from. Are they clean? Yes, they're probably clean. And they've probably been decontaminated. But some of those contaminants are already at work degrading the quality of the piece of gear or equipment that you're looking at to use to protect your butt or those of your families. And so I think purchasing new is probably the way to go. Of course, a, a decent gas mask uh, like either one of these is going to run you between two and three hundred dollars. And then the filters themselves are going to range anywhere between $20 and $80, depending on what you're trying to protect yourself from. You know, we have looked at the parcel in the past. I'll leave a link right up here so that you can go look at the detailed review of this. I do like this. It has a nice full face shield, so you have nearly 100% field of view and vision. It does have a 40 millimeter uh, thread for your filters, which is something that you definitely want to look at. The one thing that I don't like uh, in particular is the straps, right? Uh, I know I mentioned that before, but there, there's just something about me not wanting rubber straps. They're fine. They fit fine. Uh, it's just a, a personal preference. So, you know, you see this one. I already have a mask on. That's because I was using it and trying it out. It does have an expiration date, and they all will. This particular one, it goes all the way out to... 2026 and this filter right here is for everything that will basically not kill you right so all of your dust all of your smoke all of your gas and things of this nature but against a sea burn 
or NBC threat, this is not the filter that you're going to want. What you're going to want is a filter like this. And it'll have a shelf life for a little while as well. And this one is the Myra filter. Again, I'll leave some links down in the description below. This filter runs about $75. This one about $20. The other thing I don't particularly like about either one, to be honest with you, is that they don't come with a carrying case. So it's just, you get the mask, right? That's all you get. You get a mask. And, I mean, I want if I'm going to invest that kind of money, I'd like it to come with some sort of package to put it in. Does that make sense? All right, so the second thing I need you to know, and since we've already looked at them, is that you probably need some spare filters. You know, having a filter obviously for each mask, and then having different types of filters for different types of uses is going to be beneficial to you because they're not going to last forever. You can't run around in a gas mask all day long. They're only going to work for so long, and it's predominantly to get you from point of threat to a point of safety, right? It's not to hang out in one location and to keep you know, running and gunning in the good fight. So make sure that you get several filters, uh, particularly for the ones and the, for those particulates that you are looking for. You gotta have multiple filters, fellas. So the third thing to know, and, and this is the, kind of a scary thing about NBC environments, is when one happens, if you're not ready, it's too late. If the threat happens and your mask is at home, but you're in your vehicle or you're at work, as unlikely as that is, and it is extremely unlikely, it is already too late. Sometimes the mere fact of having a mask on your person and getting it on your face is too late. Because these things need to be fitted and they need to be donned and sealed before that threat actually takes place which can give you a very small amount of time a very small window of opportunity in order to protect yourself so if you decide to buy one of these consider where you're going to keep it and consider how you're going to communicate with those that you love in order to protect themselves as well right so the last thing i think you need to have in your kit bag before we do a little deeper dive on the myra is that the United States is a huge place, right? It's huge. As you know, probably 95% of the population of the United States lives on one coast or the other, right up and down the coast, right? And of course, that's predominantly where the major threats are because that's where the most people are. So if you live in, say, Iowa, or if you live in some other flyover state, the likelihood of a NBC threat, whether it's biological or nuclear or anything else and these things aren't going to protect you against nuclear threat fellas like uh, unless you got a full unless you got a full suit man you're, you're kind of screwed you know the the likelihood of an event happening is slim to nil now as you know just from recent news the unlikely can happen in the unlikely places right college girls get killed at a campus in small town Oregon. Mass shootings happen in schools in the middle of central Texas, right? The unthinkable can happen in the most unlikely time and place. And so there's a variety of things that we have to be prepared and ready for. And potentially this is one of those things that you should consider preparing for. Now I would caution you against being right and so I would caution you against being ready for an NBC event before you're ready for anything else right because again these are, are defensive tools they're defensive measures that we can have and I'm never gonna sit here and advocate that you should go on the offense of using these things with your own uh, weapons that this would end up helping protect you against right I'm not here to, to advocate looting or anything else Because the truth is, there are a lot of things that are out there that we need to have in our kits, right? We need to have equipment in our vehicle. Because you never know when you're going to break down. You never know when you're at work and the power is going to go out. 
And so having backup power is probably something that you need to consider before you go ahead and invest something like this. Now this is the Myra CM7M military gas mask. It's made from some rubber that's extremely resistant to sea burn agents. And it's suitable for industrial or domestic emergency preparedness. It, of course, it uses a 40 millimeter NATO gas mask filter. It is compatible with optical devices and it allows for safe and easy drinking during use in a contaminated area. And it'll come uh, pre-installed with a hydration system and canteen. And of course, it's also compatible with a Camelback or water bladder or anything with a type M adapter. And it also allows for sweat drainage through the exhalation chamber. It has an effective field of vision of 71.5%. With binoculars, your field of vision is 34%. Now that's gonna be a problem. Cause we gotta have some daggum tears of economy, right fellas? Oh yeah. Man, this thing is filled with them. Every time that you like and share one of these videos, so have at it boys. Just in time for extraction coming through. All right, team, there you go. Four things to have in your kit bag before you go out buying a gas mask and a couple gas masks to consider adding into your kit bag. Let me know a couple things down in the comments below. One, of course, what you thought about the content. Two, do you own one? Do you want to own one? Where do you keep it? Leave some of your own tips in the comments section because that's how this community grows in authenticity. It's based off of your experience. And I'm looking forward to it. Until then, you stay out there, you keep grinding, and you stay stoked. Team, if you want to master your craft and develop your tactical virtue, make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notification bell so that you can stay up to date on future content. Consider becoming a channel member. It's going to give you exclusive access to content not available to anybody else. I appreciate you guys. Until then, you stay out there, you keep grinding, and you stay stoked.